but I also have to read myself. <laughs> I have to find the compromise. <laughs> But I will face the. Okay, uh, we are opening now the last session of the conference. And as the uh, last uh, uh, chairman, I would like to use this opportunity on behalf of uh, all of us to thank the organizers for this wonderful thing they have done here. I think they've really done an outstanding workshop here or conference and this is uh, to Anton Alexeyev, to Luis Alvarez Gome, to Ignatios Antoniades, to Jean-Pierre Deringer, to Sergio Ferraro, Matthias Gabadriel, to Elena Gianniolo, to Wolfgang Lersch and to Angel Oranga. So I think we all thank them. I think one of the wonderful things they did here is that they really allowed the younger generation to give, to be more exposed and to give uh, more talks. And indeed, if uh, we should be optimistic in the optimistic scenario that great things are going to happen in the next few years, it's the young generation which is going to be under a lot of pressure. I think none of the younger generation ever actually lived through a true discovery. Maybe the neutrino uh, mass, which is still not a five uh, sigma event, and they're going to find themselves in an environment that they're not used to. And I think uh, from that point of view, this conference here and the conference in Rome are extremely important so that you have not only your internal compass to what to do in those days, but also some external compass. And uh, I'm sure that Hiroshi is going now to draw us a very clear compass. <laughs> uh, so uh, I'd like to start again uh, thank you, thanking the organizer for hosting this wonderful conference and also for the honor of uh, giving this uh, summary talk. So, actually, this is the second time I give uh, a summary talk of Spring's conference. And the first time was uh, a Spring conference, Spring 2004, in Paris. And when I was asked to give such a summary talk, I talked to David Gross and asked him what I should do. And he said, there are two things you can do. One is uh, to attend all the talk, listen to them carefully taking note, and then give a traditional summary talk. And the second, is to give, talk about whatever you want to talk, vision talk. So, when, so I did the first traditional talk in Paris. So when I was asked to give this summary talk again, I thought this would be my opportunity to give my vision talk. And then David, <laughs> I, saw, I saw the schedule, and then the David is going to give the vision talk. So... <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so I, I will just give the traditional summary talk. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so when I was asked to do this, I thought maybe I need some organizing principles because there are over 40 talks. And so I asked myself why I study string theory. And there are several good reasons to it. And I thought I should organize my thinking in terms of why I, I do string theory. And the, the, of course, the first thing to come, my, to, come to my mind is that the string theory is a candidate. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not talking about such tra 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 trivial thing like running the United States for the next four years, but actually we're really looking for something that governs really everything, <laughs> from Planck lengths to the size of the universe, for all the duration of the universe. And uh, so it's reasonable that it takes a little bit longer than searching for the next president of the United States. And the next good reason to study string theory is string theory is a model. Now, being model is a little bit different from being a candidate, and I would like to clarify what I mean by that. Namely, the string theory is already a good approximation, if not the exact 
description of our world. It, has, it can have four large dimensions, the gravity, chiral or fermion, gauge interaction, supersymmetry breaking, all that we think are generic feature of our four-dimensional world. And so it, is, it teaches us what are possible in the four-dimensional consistent theory of gravity. And uh, so, for example, it explains Hawking's seemingly robust argument of information, uh, explain why Hawking's argument can go wrong. Now, when uh, 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 Cameron Buffer and Andy Strominger explained uh, Beckenstein-Hawking Hawking entropy, uh, some people asked why why should be excited about the extreme black hole. I mean, real thing is sure to black hole. But I think those people are missing the point because after all, we're, it's not very likely that we're going to measure Hawking radiation of Schwarzschild black hole anytime in the future either. And the point was that it was demonstrating that uh, what actually this seemingly robust argument can go wrong in consistent framework. So that's another aspect of string theory. And the third aspect of string theory is that it is a tool. It is a very powerful tool which has been uh, demonstrated, for example, during this talk, it has numerous applications to study strongly coupled, coupled interacting, uh, strongly interacting systems such as this. And then there's yet fourth reason that uh, we should study string theory. That is that it is a language. It provides us a language. And language is, of course, very important for science. And, for example, when we try to think about quantum gravity, we know that uh, if you get to the Planck scale, Space and time would not be a fundamental concept anymore, but it should be replaced by more, something more fundamental. And string theory gives us a way to try to come up with such a language. And also, the development uh, in the past couple of years, uh, which was very nicely reviewed during this conference, shows that traditional method of understanding quantum field theorem may not be the best way. There might be an alternative way of doing it, and in fact, through the uh, gauge gravity duality, these two uh, efforts to come up with a better language may actually converge. So, I should say string theory is a candidate, a model, a tool, and a language. And in fact, during this conference, exciting progress has been reported in each of these four categories, and so that I thought that maybe I should organize my summary talk according to these four categories. Of course, I mean, this is sort of a convenience and it not, does not fit to everything. So, for example, important work often plays more than one role. So, so for example, study of extreme black hole I mentioned gave, of course, very important lessons about quantum gravity, but it also leads to a very powerful tool to understand the strongly coupled dynamical system and also had beautiful mathematical structure. So, this one thing can have... So, so, this, it, it, so I'm just going to give some kind of... Uh, uh, arbitrary division of uh, these four categories. So let me start with string theory as a candidate. Okay, so what we have learned about string theory as a candidate during this conference. Well, first of all, I should remind you, in case, since there, I, I saw that there are some non-string theorists in the audience, I'd like to remind you that there are many reasons that we, want, we, sh we, tr we should try to derive realistic model of particle physics from string theory. First is, of course, the existence proof that if you find really completely satisfactory model out of string theory, it is a proof that it can be a unified theory of all particles and the interactions. And also trying to do that may lead us to come up with a new mechanisms that phenomenologists might not have thought about. For example, the idea of large extra dimensions or work compactification naturally emerged from string theory idea development, and there can be more coming out. And of course, if it turns out that there are only very few class of models that are consistent with everything we know so far about the experiment, it can lead to testable predictions. So those are some good reasons that we should continue to look for realistic models. And Luis Ivanez reviewed the current status of what I may call a minimum supersymmetric standard model landscape, reviewing various constructions. And he pointed out that often phenomenologically designed coupling are prohibited if you just apply supergravity descriptions and you have to actually do stringy computation. And the, the method to do that was explained by Weingang. And uh, uh, 
he also uh, um, uh, discussed gravity mediation scenario extensively and uh, uh, explained that how this can be sensitive. So for example, if gravity mediation was is correct, then physics at LHC might actually give us a glimpse of uh, ultraviolet physics. Heterotic string construction was discussed by Donaji. And this is, of course, the classic example of uh, Kandera's Horowitz, Strominger, and Witten. And he gave, a very, uh, he gave a very explicit example which satisfies many phenomenological requirements, such as a standard gauge group, but no extra U1s, and precise uh, uh, standard model particle spectrum with no exotic, although to remove all modula, you have to fix them, and this has not been achieved. And semi-realistic coupling, R parity, mu term, et cetera. And he, during the course, he explained how actually difficult to satisfy all mathematical and phenomenological consistency conditions. And so far, there is only one satisfactory example, which led him to suggest that maybe there is only a very tiny corner where you can realize the minimum supersymmetric st standard model out of landscape and even more out of swamp land. F-theory is another very interesting development. So F-theory construction, in some sense, uh, take uh, combines the advantage of local model, so, so, and, and then also the heterotic construction, which has natural ground unification. So Kumar and Buffer argue that uh, if you assume that gravity decouples from gauge dynamics, which is natural, naturally motivated because of the fact that standard model, sorry, uh, seems to imply uh, asymptotic free gut models. Uh, there's almost unique F-theory construction that, is far, that satisfy all the phenomenological requirements. And moreover, from there, uh, you seem to get the natural uh, 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 prediction about, or, or not post, some post-prediction about the top quark mass mu term uh, and explain double triple splitting and uh, imply weak scale supersymmetry breaking. And it all works almost too perfectly, so let me, let, that led me to ask, uh, is there any problem left unsolved in this construction, or are we all out of a job? <laughs> now, supersymmetry breaking, understanding this is, of course, very important. And there are two excellent talks on this subject. Uh, David Shi gave a, a very nice, uh, 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 precise definition of what you mean by gauge mediation. And uh, he explained how you can use that to, to derive low energy effective theory terms uh, in the case of uh, general gauge mediation. And Hama Fialinde applied this framework to the particular case where you can sort of realize this holographically. Uh, in particular, you consider uh, Trebanov structural geometry, put anti D3 brain. So this is the original construction by uh, Kachiru Pearson and Fialinde, which has a very nice holographic description of uh, metastable uh, supersymmetry breaking vacuum, and he added the additional seven brain to mediate uh, that supersymmetry breaking effect, which realizes uh, Gageno mediation in the holographic context. Of course, we should not only look at the RSC, but we should look, at, look for possibility to understand and te possibly test the string theory at cosmology, because in fact, uh, interestingly enough, both gravity and quantum mechanics be becomes important. These at these two extreme uh, uh, limit of length scale. Of course, at short distance is important, but, of, uh, but on the other hand, these, uh, for example, fluctuations are actually due to fluctuation of geometry and matter during the inflation era, according to the inflation theory. Excuse me. So, uh, Renata Karosh reviewed uh, Future, possible future test of string theory by CMB polarization, spectral index, non-Gaussianity, and cosmic string. And, uh